Hi, my name is Hans and years ago I remember somebody asking me if I could add uh, a feature to the graphics drive drivers to allow people to write their own GPU assembly for shaders. And I remember responding, you really don't want to be writing your own uh, GPU shader code. Well, lately I've been working on adding switch support to the Warp 3D Nova shader compiler. Um, and of course, encountering the challenges that come with the uh, single instruction multiple thread architecture. So what I'd like to do is quickly go through why uh, writing assembly code for GPUs or anything with an SIMT architecture is really hard. Okay, let's take a look at a simple if else block. Now with a normal CPU, that's relatively easy to uh, implement an assembler. So here's the code for PowerPC. Basically, you've got a compare instruction, then a branch of greater than or equal. So what that does is it says, if B is greater than or equal to A, then jump to the else code. And then if, if that's the case that jumps to there. Otherwise, it falls through to the if code, and then this b.l4 is a branch that bypasses the else code. So quite easy to follow and understand what's happening. What's the problem with GPUs? Well, as far as I know, all of the modern ones use a single instruction multiple thread architecture. That means you have multiple threads, uh, typically 32 or 64 threads, that execute the exact same instruction in lockstep. So that means you're no longer dealing with one thread, one line of code. You need to think in parallel. But here's the problem. The biggest problem is how do we implement if else when different threads need to go down different paths? So let's say half the threads need to, need to execute the if block and half the threads need to execute else. And remember, the architecture, all threads execute the same instruction in lockstep. There's no chance for one group of threads to execute one instruction and another group of threads to uh, execute a different instruction. And the way that you do this is you have to execute both, unless all of the threads uh, return true or all of the threads return false, you have to execute both the if block and the else block, and you've got the exec mask, which you, in which you disable the threads that should not execute the particular block. So let's see how that works step by step. So the first thing to do is you save the exec mask. So that's saving what it was before you entered if and else. Then you do the compare, is v9 less than v10 and after that you end that 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 compare returns a mask that's the same size as the number of threads so one bit for every thread and then after that you end that mask with the exec uh, mask and what that does is that disables all of the threads that sh it returned false for the next bit is just, it's a small optimization. So you branch to L2 if all of the threads got disabled. So if all of the threads got disabled, then you can jump straight through to the else code. Otherwise, the threads that remain true, which could be all of them, um, they are active as you execute the if code. The other threads are inactive. And then you enter the else block. And at this point, what this and n2 does is it inverts the exec mask and ends it with the uh, what the exec mask was when you saved it. So it, it masks off threads that were disabled before you enter the if else code. So that enables the false threads, disables the true threads. And again, you have this um, if all threads uh, as zero, so all threads are disabled, then jump straight to the end. Otherwise, you execute the else branch code, and 
at this point, again, the, the other threads are being disabled, so they don't execute it. Only the threads that need to do it do. And then finally, you restore the exec mask back to what it was before you entered if and else. Now, at this point, some people might say, yeah, that's more complicated, but it doesn't look that much more difficult. Well, we're only just getting started. So for loops need to keep track of which threads are still active. So in for loops, you have an additional, uh, an additional uh, mask that records which threads are still running and which ones have either uh, ended or, or exited the for loop. Um, and at the same time, that code, you need to make sure that the GPU loops back to the top as appropriate. Functions need to keep track of which threads have exited the function, because right? at any point they can call return. The return uh, can be executed, in which case that thread should stop running until all of the threads have exited that function. And after that, uh, pixel or fragment shaders can also execute kill or discard. That both mean the same thing, which means that that thread for the rest of the time uh, that the shader runs on that pixel or sample, that thread is inactive. It's dead, effectively. And then beyond that, you can have a four within an if else and an if else within a four and a switch and function calls in many, many combinations. So as you can see, the, the, the complexity level uh, increases dramatically. When even fairly basic looking shaders. So, uh, quick summary, SIMT assembly, writing it is hard because, because of the architecture, you've got multiple threads executing the same instruction in lockstep. That means you need to execute all possible code paths enabling and disabling the threads that shouldn't be running them, unless every single thread uh, needs to execute exactly the same code. Next, conditional branch code spreads throughout the code. So if we look back, um, you'll see that, you know, with, with, with CPU code, you've got the compare and then simple branches to go to if and else. Here, you start with a simple compare, then you're twiddling execution bits, but then you have to insert additional code at the start of the else block and at the end of the entire block. And then beyond that, you need to analyze any absolute branches, any returns, uh, anything that might exit either the current function or the shader, and rework that code to insert conditional code where it's actually part of a, a uh, different control flow. So if, if else or for loop or something like that. And keeping track of ab if all of this is very, very hard. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, or maybe just interesting for, for, for people who are never going to be writing their own GPU assembly code, which I highly discourage because, as I say, it's it's very hard to do. It's so easy to get things wrong. And then you've got masses of code. And again, you need to think in parallel. It's like the, the code is not, the, the code in each thread is not doing exactly what you see on the page. That's it for now. See you next time.